suppression of emotion is single-handedly the worst way to regulate emotion. When someone suppresses emotions, and that's really interesting because a lot of people do, especially in the workforce when we taught not to do that, not to express. When somebody suppresses how they feel, how does that look for that individual? How does that affect them besides that sleep? Um, and from your expertise and your studies, how good or bad it is to suppress emotions? Um, so I'll answer those in reverse order. So um, suppression of emotion is single-handedly the worst way to regulate emotion. Um, so suppression of emotion leads to um, impact negative, I say negative, um, uh, suppression of, of emotion regularly, consistently, and in, with intense emotion um, leads to health outcomes, poor health outcomes in terms of things like heart disease, raised blood pressure, raised heart rate, um, uh, and, and physical illness. Uh, regular consistent suppression, suppression, especially of intense emotions, also um, has poor outcomes from a, mo from a mental health and a mental well-being point of view. Um, so people report greater um, uh, things like uh, depression, anxiety, um, or um, outbursts of anger, could be a, a combination of those things. Um, and similarly, as we find for emotional well-being outcomes, so suppression and or so non non-expression, whether it be through suppression or repression, because that can be two different things, um, is single-handedly the worst way to regulate emotions. Um, there are a number of others which I can I can go into, um, but suppression is is yeah single-handedly the worst. To answer your other question then, which was how does that show up for people? It's really hard to give an answer to that because it's very idiosyncratic. So what that means is it's very different for each individual that you're working with. There does tend to be some common themes, though. So um, the way I would uh, the way I would sort of describe it is that when when you feel an emotion and then you and you suppress it, you sort of put it back down into let's use the metaphor of a jar. So, so there's a, there's a jar that's empty. You feel a feeling, and you push it back down, and it doesn't go. It, it doesn't go because you haven't expressed it. You've you've held it in you, and then and so it's in the jar. And then you might feel um, the same emotion again because you remember what's happened. So, if I pick an example, let's say, um, if I think about my swearing at a customer thing, I swore at the customer. Um, I had that anger at the time. Um, and I expressed it in a very destructive way. Um, but then I was sad and embarrassed and guilty about the fact I'd done it, but I couldn't share that. So back in the jar, it goes. I then um, sit there waiting for my boss to get off the phone with the customer because I can hear them talking with each other. And, I, and I'm re I remember how guilty I felt, but I can't express that guilt. So it goes back in the jar. Um, I then get told to come down to the meeting room by my manager where we're going to talk about the incident. I feel guilty again. I remember the incident, but I can't suppress it. So it goes back down in my jar. But each time the jar is getting more and more full. And at some point, what happens is the jar gets so full, the emotion has got nowhere to go. So it then floods out. And, and what, uh, what different emotions, so some emotion researchers call it a flooding out episode. Um, others call it uh, an outpouring. But it's that the metaphor is that something's bursting out of wherever it is. And so that, that bursting out can come through tears for some it can come through kind of anger and rage for others it can come through um walking away so for some people that 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 um outpouring of emotion is you know what i'm done and just get up and, and, and check out and walk out so it's really hard to say um, what the, if it looks universal for people because it doesn't what is common though is some the commonality with someone who suppresses consistently is that what you'll see is flashes of emotion instead you'll see those those outpourings um it'll be like everything seems okay it seems okay then it's whoa and then it go, then it kind of comes back in again um so i would say that's probably the closest you're going to get to um uh, like a, a universal um uh, uh depiction but it's not like a everyone behaves the same it would tend to be a flooding out thing. Now, what can get interesting is where that flooding out happens. So for some people, it might happen at home. Others, it might happen um, with colleagues. Others, it might happen on their own. They might have a, a place where they go where they let it all out. Um, for me, the, the way I describe it is you, it's got to come out somewhere. And if you don't yeah. choose how it comes out, 
sometimes you won't get the choice it will it will just it will find its own way out um so yeah yeah that's great or in the car right holding the wheel and, yeah. and like letting it out <laughs> right some people do that right but and then sometimes even floods in the areas that are unrelated right we we kind of all experience sometimes uh, you know seeing somebody that they get upset about something but it's have nothing to do with that specific area it's have to do with everything else so for those individuals that say okay well I have those emotions I feel that mm -hmm. way how that relates to communication well how can I then now go and express that I don't know even how to start expressing that I don't even know how to communicate that what are the tools what are the things they can start using themselves to to go and say okay what do i do now where are the steps what are the steps you took through your, your journey to say okay now i need to communicate how do i communicate how do i speak so um so i begin with start small um uh, and, and I, I say this when I'm advocating to individuals or to say managers who want to encourage their their teams to um, to um, express how, how they, what they're feeling about things more often. So for me, it's about starting small, um, and and that starting small can begin with starting small with yourself. So that could be through journaling or through some kind of. Uh, it sounds a bit childish sometimes. Um, when because some people say to me, oh, isn't that just like having a diary like I did when I was a teenager? I'm like, well, maybe. Um, but the, the 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 what you need to start the start small bit is start getting it out of here and out into the world somehow. So that could be through writing. Um, it could also be through a, in an audio way. So um, one of the things that I I do is I go out for a walk with my earphones in, and I and I speak out loud as if I'm on the phone. So for people that are walking around me, they think I'm just on the phone, but I'm not. I'm just speaking it out loud because that way it's out of me. And I don't need anybody else to hear it. I just need it to be out and expressed somehow. Sometimes I'll record it and so I can listen back to it in the future. So I can think, oh, I wonder what's going on for me that day when I wanted to go back, when I wanted to um, speak about some of those things. Um, it can also be expressing it through exercise. That can be another way of doing it. So if you're feeling angry or frustrated about something, then um, go and work it out. But don't just go out and, and work it out from a, um, I'm just going to go and pound the tarmac. Um, when, you're, when you're doing it, um, think about what it is that you're, the emotion that you're holding in. So that you, again, and again, it sounds, the risk sounding a bit cliche, but it's that, it's that link of thinking and feeling again. So if I'm if I'm running and I'm thinking about this thing and, and the frustration that I've got about it, and I'm thinking, right, how can I push that out of me then? And, and I can do that by yeah, pounding the tarmac as, as I go or punching the punch bag or, or pushing the extra five kilos or or whatever that might be. So for me, it's when I say start small, it's about just start getting it out of you without needing to worry about if anyone else is listening yet. Um, uh, the other part of Start Small then is um, start sharing how you feel about things that you're less worried about or less passionate about or less caring about. So for example, if if I've got two things, one that's massively important to me and one that I'm interested in, but it's not massively important, then share what you feel about the thing that you're interested in before you share about this thing that's really important to you. Because if the emotion is really in, is really intense or really, um, yeah, really intense, then if you're not used to ex expressing it, it might then just all come out with a bit of a surprise. So if if you're thinking, right, I want to start think, expressing how I feel a bit more, maybe with my manager or with my colleagues, if you're annoyed, at, let's say you're, you're furious about this project, but you're annoyed about this one, talk about your annoyance on this one first before you talk about your fury on this one. Um, so when I say start small, it also means start small on the, the, uh, the intensity of the emotions that um, that you're experiencing and I think it's it's a bit like a I guess a habit in a way that once you get used to expressing it it will then become more comfortable and it also gives you a safer way to assess what people's responses to it are because sometimes I think our nervousness about what we think people will think of us expressing is different yeah. to what to what you actually get in return um, so it maybe gives you a bit of a safer way to do that as well yeah. And I would say even test it 
the same thing with multiple people. I really mm, want yeah, to add idea. that because sometimes when we test it in one environment, we will get one response and we'll test it with another environment. It's a completely different response. And maybe in some area we'll get a more positive response. Some may get more negative response. It, it happens often yeah, for yeah. entrepreneurs, right? When they have their idea and they go to their family member, they're like, oh, okay, I'm going to keep, quit my corporate job. I'm going to start this entrepreneurship. This is my idea. And their whole family is like, oh my God, no, <laughs> you should never do that. Don't quit school. Yeah. Don't quit this. Continue of that safe path. And then you go to a different group and you share that thing that you're afraid to share. And that's a big thing, the big step you're trying to do. And they're encouraging and they push you forward and they give you examples how you can do it and how you can get there and kind of help you to maybe promote the um, that that outcome that you're searching for and, and make you feel more at ease. So to add to that, I would say, try it with different groups, different environments. That way you can also see the different response and, and, and see how it feels for you as well. 